Make in India, a call to action. An invitation to gain from India's determination to become the manufacturing home for the world. An invitation to benefit from investing in the world's second most populous nation and second fastest growing economy. To gain from connecting with one of the largest middle classes in the world and buyers whose purchasing power ranks third in the world. Buyers whose per capita incomes are growing by 7.5% annually, driving consumption in a manner that should make India one of the top three consuming nations worldwide within the next 15 years. And with an investment-friendly government at the center, opportunity is everywhere. I think what has changed in the last year is, first of all, the Make in India initiative. The Make in India initiative encourages companies to come to India. I think that's a very big plus. Two, there is a big push on infrastructure, which is associated in a way with Make in India. You're creating conditions for Make in India. China is in the best position to make the most of these opportunities. In recent years, Chinese corporations have been looking beyond their borders to pursue new markets. This has seen them invest nearly a hundred billion US dollars globally. And given the consumer base and pro-investment climate, India is a market China cannot ignore. Some have already set up base and are making the most of their advantage as early birds. For instance, Chinese equipment manufacturing giant, the Sani Group, has successfully positioned itself as a key supplier of India's growing heavy machinery needs. Why we invest so much? Why we invest uh, for so long time? Because we believe in this country. We believe in the future of this country. We want to invest forever yeah, for India. Beiki Photon, a Chinese automobile manufacturer, recognizes the growing need for heavy commercial vehicle makers. If you take a look at GDP growth rate right now, it's basically already, I think it's close and it's going to be ahead of China. Of course, China have a huge base, but as far as just look at GDP potential growth rate, they have much higher potential to take off right now. Chinese investment in India is not new. From the 90s, Chinese companies have been working in partnership with Indian firms to form entities such as YapZoom that bring the best of Chinese and Indian enterprise together to serve a growing automobile industry. The plan in India is to manufacture and market plastic fuel tanks. Entry into India was very systematic, very timely. Highly Electricals has been making air conditioners in India for some time and is now looking to increase production. China where we produce almost like 100 million compressors and as compared to China, in India we produce only 4 million. So it's just 4%. So the potential here in India is huge. Consumer Durables manufacturer Haya has introduced a large bouquet of products for Indian consumers and claims double-digit growth for over five years in a highly competitive market. While many Chinese companies have already gained the early bird advantage by investing from the late 90s, India's size and buying power makes it a lucrative destination even now. For instance, smartphone manufacturers can benefit from 900 million mobile users who are largely untapped. Take cell phone major Oppo. They are diversifying their product range and partnering with local celebrities to influence buyers. In the past one year, we opened up branch offices in 20 states across India and developed good relationships with our business partners. 
telecom major ZTE has been investing in India since 1999 and continues to see great potential here. India is our, the second largest market after China. We always treat India as a very strategic market. To make the most of the India opportunity is to go beyond just new investments. It is to make the most of India's large talent base. For instance, Huawei recognized the global advantage of hiring India's skilled English-speaking workers and set up an R&D center in Bangalore. I think uh, uh, India's talent, yeah, high quality talent, so help Huawei yeah, to enhance our business, not only in India, also, in, uh, also global, yeah, worldwide. In fact, India's global standing offers Chinese corporations the opportunity to access markets hitherto close to them. As His Excellency, the Chinese ambassador, Li Yusheng explains. India uh, is uh, uh, you know, standing in the uh, line between China and Europe, between China and Africa, and, and the uh, Middle East. So if we set a, 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 a factory facility in uh, India, we can you know, provide uh, assistance or help uh, or extend our you know, uh, trade or manufacturing to other parts of, of the world. This atmosphere of optimism is a chance to consolidate existing ties and new engagements. Traditionally, India has been good with service delivery, while China has taken the lead in manufacturing. But now, both nations can look to expand their conventional roles. We need to support each other today bilaterally economically, in trade, uh, in, in different uh, ways of economic contact, most of all in investments. In 2014, India elected Mr. Narendra Modi Prime Minister, giving him the mandate to take India into a new era of growth and development. A visionary leader, Mr. Modi has successfully invited Chinese companies to invest during his tenure as Chief Minister of India's most economically progressive state, Gujarat. Today, with Mr. Modi at the center, the invitation to all Chinese companies is to make in India and reach the world. When we come to India uh, in 2012, at that time, Mr. Narendra Modi still is the chief minister of Gujarat. And the reason we put our plant in Gujarat, uh, we think one most important thing is because of the Gujarat uh, government. It means because of Narendra Modi. So we think his policy is very open. Uh, he wants to uh, attract more foreign development investment to India. And he tried to improve the government efficiency. So we hope what he has done in Gujarat he can do it in India. This positivity is good for both countries. India has a great need and ambition. While China wishes to access new markets, reduce manufacturing costs and reach customers with a variety of products, Make in India is an invitation to companies across the world to set up manufacturing units in India to develop sectors as diverse as infrastructure, automobiles, telecom, heavy machinery, and consumer durables. China as a close neighbor is our special guest. In infrastructure alone, India is expected to spend nearly 542 billion US dollars in the next five years. Make in India creates a platform for new economic engagements for both the countries. In the Make in India uh, initiative, we have identified 25 sectors where India has core competency. And these are all areas where Chinese companies must come and manufacture. Rather than export from China, which is unsustainable, they should seriously look at manufacturing in India, manufacture for the Indian market, and also look at manufacturing 
for the global markets from India. Chinese companies will find that as part of the Make in India initiative, the host nation will help them shift swiftly and efficiently into top gear, even as they assist the nation in the development of globally valued skills. To do uh, manufacturing and to do investment, you need skills. So there is a Skill India campaign. And the Chinese could actually come in. The Chinese have a very, very successful model of vocational training. If you now add it up to make in India, infrastructure India, skill in India, I, I think you get a package which the Chinese can, can uh, uh, sort of easily respond to. Our leaders are placing a special emphasis on deepening and broad basic economic engagement. And in this process, I believe, two-way investment flows will play an important role. When President Xi visited India last September, he mentioned the target of Chinese companies investing 20 billion US dollars in India in the next five years. And Prime Minister Modi welcomed Chinese investment into India. This invitation was underlined during the Prime Minister's official visit to China. Mr. Modi met with several leading Chinese CEOs and addressed a business forum where he assured captains of the Chinese industry of India's commitment to business. Clearly, India is bullish on developing its relationship with China. Both countries can benefit greatly and that is good for the entire region. For Chinese corporations, this is an opportunity to grow, invest and create new businesses that will reach not only a ready local market, but also the entire world.